Thank you, Asu, and, and, and thanks to uh, MIT and IDSS for inviting me to, uh, to be here. It's, uh, it, it's quite an honor, and I, I appreciate it. Um, uh, I have to t tell a little bit of a story here. Um, Rick Ross uh, uh, sent me an email before the event and, and told me that I was fancy schmancy because I was on the program. So, so I, uh, um, I, I got dressed up and wore a suit and tie. This is what we do in Washington. And uh, about 20 minutes ago, Simon Johnson delivered the bad news, which is that, uh, um, and, and this is bad news for some of you in the audience too, is uh, um, if you show up at the media lab wearing a necktie, uh, you're sending a strong signal that you're completely clueless. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, so, um, just you know. Uh, okay, uh, uh, big data challenges and opportunities in financial stability uh, monitoring. Um, I don't think I'm going to uh, tell this crowd anything about big data that you don't already know, at least big data per se, but hopefully I'll um, map some of those issues to financial stability considerations, uh, and, and, and that might be news. Um, I have to do a disclaimer because I, I, I do work for the government. These opinions expressed are those of the authors do not necessarily represent official of our treasury positions of policy. Done. Um, uh, and uh, for those of you who are taking snapshots of the slides as they go by, um, actually uh, pretty much all of this is in a forthcoming paper that's going to be uh, um, the, the Bank of France Financial Stability Review is, uh, uh, is going to publish in, in, in a week or two. Um, and those are my co-authors on that paper. So uh, uh, Jag is at uh, Michigan and Louis is at Maryland. Um, uh, so uh, a little anecdote. I uh, um, uh, several months ago had uh, the uh, the pleasure of uh, um, chatting with Roger Meyerson, um, who won the Nobel Prize in Economics uh, several years ago. He came to the OFR for a visit, um, and we uh, his work is in game theory and uh, the economic theory of information. And in the course of that conversation, I uh, um, had this uh, this little epiphany that uh, um, you know, his, his research is all about information theory. Um, a lot of the stuff I work on is about information reality. Um, so, so the um, uh, the the issues here um, around big data are implementation issues. Um, and uh, a lot of times in in economics, uh, um, we we sort of sweep that under the rug. Uh, but uh, um, working for the OFR, we have to deal with the implementation realities, um, and, and they matter. So the, the, the four Vs there, uh, I think you, uh, you're, you're familiar with those. They're all basically scalability problems. Um, uh, uh, so uh, we point out in the, in the first paragraph of the paper that big data is a misnomer. Um, uh, a, a data set is not big. It cannot be big, uh, is sort of the, the point. Uh, a, a, a data set is too big for a particular use case with a particular imp implementation technology. So you're just the same way that my, my, my shirt is not too big, it's too big for me, uh, um, is the way to think about it. Um, and there's a great quote there from uh, Benny Banerjee, uh, you, you can't solve exponential problems with linear solutions. Um, <clears throat> it gets to that point. Um, uh, you gotta fight computation with computation. Basic structure of uh, the paper in these slides is, uh, um, uh, we work through uh, um, uh, a data life cycle um, from a financial uh, stability monitoring perspective. Uh, this, this life cycle um, uh, would apply uh, at this level of generality to, to pretty much any organization. Uh, but uh, uh, data acquisition, uh, data cleaning, integration and representation, modeling and analysis, uh, and uh, uh, data sharing and transparency. And, and what we do in the paper is, and in the rest of the talk, is, is map these issues to specific examples in financial stability monitoring. Um, the, the ones I, uh, <clears throat> uh, I'm going to focus on here um, may not even be the, uh, the, the best examples to use, but they were ones that uh, were, were pithy and I could uh, um, uh, uh, talk about quickly. Um, so uh, they, uh, uh, um, they, they're certainly not the only examples. So starting from the top, data acquisition. Um, one of the uh, key facts about financial stability monitoring is that the financial system is big. Um, it's really big and really diverse, um, <clears throat> and uh, you, you really can't and don't want to monitor everything all the time. Uh, so you need uh, some mechanism uh, for selective monitoring um, coupled with a mechanism for resolution enhancement when you need it. You, you need to be able to drill down. Uh, and, and there are uh, four key dimensions that, uh, that we see uh, um, in which drill down is important. So first is coverage. Uh, um, so 
uh, I think of a, um, uh, a Google Maps analogy. Uh, does, your, do, does your mapping uh, technology allow you to maneuver around the, the landscape and, and cover uh, everything as you need it? Um, uh, and we uh, point to the, the G20 data gaps initiative that, uh, that, that began after the crisis uh, um, when this the question of coverage in, in, in the shadow banking system uh, um, uh, became very prominent. Um, frequency is a, a second issue, uh, and uh, um, to, to some extent, you can um, uh, uh, you can use uh, temporal quadratures to um, to refine your picture. To some extent, you can't uh, because as the uh, um, as frequencies increase, uh, things like measurement noise and microstructure noise uh, become more and more prominent, uh, and uh, and there are limits. And, and uh, especially with high frequency trading, that is. Uh, an issue. So, so uh, the paper by Lombardi, he's a, a, a temporal measurement uh, expert at NIST, uh, points out that the, um, uh, the FINRA timestamp uh, um, requirement is uh, um, uh, on the order of a second. Um, the, uh, the, the trading latency in high frequency markets is uh, three orders of magnitude finer than that. Uh, uh, granularity and detail, uh, these are frequently um, uh, confounded. Granularity um, we're thinking of as the, the level of aggregation. Uh, so, so think about uh, um, aggregate operators uh, across the rows in a database. And, and detail is the, uh, um, uh, the, the set of attributes. So think of the columns in the database uh, and, and what's available there. Um, so uh, one example of what can go wrong with, uh, with resolution enhancement. This is uh, um, a, a paper that uh, um, uh, uh, Phil Monon and I at the OFR published recently on risk measurement precision uh, in Form PF, uh, and, and, and that is a, a data collection to, uh, to, to capture risk exposures in the hedge fund industry. There's no resolution enhancement built in, so there's a, there's a fixed set of buckets, the, uh, um, uh, um, and, and, and the funds are supposed to uh, report risk characteristics on uh, exposures in those buckets. Uh, so, for example, the top five counterparties, uh, what, what's your uh, aggregate exposure to them? And, uh, and the basic question we ask, and this was partly motivated by, by the fact that the PF data are highly uh, confidential, um, and uh, um, we didn't want to go through uh, the, the legal hassles of uh, uh, addressing those questions, so we didn't use actual data. Um, what we did was uh, um, uh, we created our own uh, um, uh, simulated hedge funds, had them fill out Form PF, and, and then we, uh, um, uh, uh, we calibrated the portfolio weights on, on these hedge funds. We had uh, tens of thousands of these uh, simulated funds. We calibrated the portfolio weights so that all of our portfolios uh, looked identical on Form PF. Uh, and then we asked uh, um, for all the other dimensions, r risk dimensions that you might measure, um, given that they are presenting a fixed picture to the SEC, um, how much variability uh, could there be? And, and that's what this, the, this picture is. So, so um, uh, well, the, the little equation here is, is the bifurcation between uh, the risk measures, everything you, you might want to know, all the, uh, the, the details, uh, um, and, and split that into the things that are reported on Form PF, the things that are not. Um, and what the, the picture shows you is the cross-sectional variability uh, uh, among the things that are not reported on Form PF, uh, given that uh, all these thousands of firms are uh, identical on PF, and, and you can see it's, it's significant. Um, uh, okay, moving on to, to second step data cleaning. Um, the, uh, uh, it, it's, it's easy to ask the, the, the question, um, uh, why is there a scalability issue in data cleaning? Isn't uh, um, data quality sort of linear in the, the volume of data? Um, and uh, uh, in one sense, the answer is yes, but it, uh, um, it, it also depends on the process that, you, that you're pushing the data through. So, so a little thought experiment here. So, so this is a picture, time series plot of uh, um, uh, mortgage data um, starting in the early 90s and going through the crisis. You see charge-offs, delinquencies, and the heavy line is foreclosures. And there's a... Uh, uh, an order of magnitude increase in the foreclosure rate during the crisis. And, and, and so a little thought experiment uh, I'd, I'd ask you to do is imagine um, 
that you're you're driving down a uh, um, a highway. You're the only car on the road. It's uh, it's not a challenging driving situation. Uh, so you're driving at a safe speed, let's say 50 miles an hour. Um, and now uh, imagine an order of magnitude increase in the speed of your car. Um, what do you think will happen? And, and the answer is you won't be thinking. Um, you will be dead because your car will literally fall apart um, and you will perish in a fireball. And the, um, uh, and, and uh, that, that's sort of what happened, if you remember the, the robo-signing crisis. Um, here's a, uh, a biggie for us on the next phase in the process data integration and representation. Um, <clears throat> again, the um, uh, financial system is big. It's also very diverse. Uh, and so we have a uh, um, uh, tremendous uh, data integration and semantic integration issue. Um, the, the, uh, um, uh, the very simplest, most basic, most important part of that is identification, um, and, and that's where we've started. Uh, so the OFR uh, um, was, was instrumental in uh, initiating the Global Legal Entity Identifier Initiative. And uh, um, uh, yeah, for, for, for folks in this room, this, uh, this should be old hat, but the, 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 there's a very basic network effect here. Um, you, you see a uh, um, uh, significant complexity savings uh, by moving to a centralized identification scheme. Um, uh, um, I'll also point out, uh, so, so the, 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 uh, um, the opportunity to, to participate in the challenges have closed, uh, but the, uh, the OFR has teamed up with NIST um, on a, uh, a grant to uh, solicit automated uh, data alignment techniques uh, for identification schemes through this FEIII challenges event, and we'll be announcing those results uh, this summer. Next phase, uh, data modeling and analysis. Um, uh, it, it's easy to think that uh, um, more data is always better, um, and uh, um, e econometrics uh, um, uh, shouldn't, shouldn't be uh, um, uh, happier, um, but it turns out that even here, um, the, the, the implementations issues raise their heads. So, so this is one example of the fat regression problem. Uh, this is, uh, um, in, in large data sets, uh, you, you can do um, uh, all kinds of feature extraction and expand the list of details. If the list of details, that's the number P, uh, um, exceeds the number of observations significantly, it turns out that a lot of basic asymptotic theory underlying econometrics uh, starts to fall apart. Um, so the, uh, the, the data are, are distributed uh, uh, sparsely in, in too big a space is the basic problem. Um, so uh, Donahoe and Stodden here, this is a picture that I swiped from uh, paper theirs. They derive the theoretical results there. Basically, this is a Monte Carlo analysis. They're looking at uh, um, uh, model selection. What, uh, um, uh, which coefficients are you going to measure? They use a, a, a lasso technique to do variable selection. And that, uh, the, that sort of sigmoidal black line in the middle is the theoretical transition point. Um, and then the, the, the colored areas are the actual Monte Carlo results. Uh, you, you see that um, it, uh, the actual results follow the, the theoretical prediction pretty closely is that uh, um, as the um, observations get more and more sparsely distributed, uh, the, uh, the model selection accuracy uh, falls apart um, pretty dramatically. Um, and my last one is sort of the final phase, uh, sharing the data at the end, uh, transparency. This was a uh, picture. Uh, that I took from uh, a paper that on, on market liquidity measurement that um, I'm uh, uh, working on with uh, some, some co-authors uh, uh, at, at the OFR, John Lichty um, and uh, Tom Piontek. Uh, um, and what we're doing here is um, trying to measure market liquidity on a daily basis from a broad set of markets. We do some dimensionality reduction there, so we, we take tens of thousands of corporate bonds and, and, and thousands of uh, equities and, and uh, and combine those into uh, portfolios. And then each portfolio is a, uh, a ribbon. Um, uh, the upshot here is that what you're looking at in this picture is a quarter of a million data points. Um, so it, it, it is, in fact, possible, uh, if you're a little bit clever, to, uh, to squeeze a lot of data uh, into uh, uh, small space with visualization. And that's it. Thank you.